what's going on guys CJR here this will be my um, impression slash review of the PlayStation Vita and um, some impressions on on uh, on the four games that you see there um, some of you who have seen my previous video know that I was able to pick up the uh, PS Vita the uh, Wi-Fi edition um, on the 9th so uh, Thursday from Amazon.ca um, they broke the street date I'm guessing probably a few thousand got shipped out so um, as far as I know only to, only in uh, Canada so some lucky Canadians out there uh, I've had uh, 72 hours now to play with the system you know play some of the games try out some of the features uh, so I'll just kinda quickly go through um, I think I'll start with the hardware here and then go into uh, some of the software stuff. Um, so right off the bat, the thing that impressed me the most that was uh, you know, evident right from the start that is kind of um, maybe a little under, under publicized is the uh, screen itself. It's the OLED screen. Um, almost, the pixels are almost indistinguishable, much like the uh, iPhone 4 and 4S. Um, crystal clear the colors are phenomenal I'll turn it on here you just push the PlayStation button there to uh, to wake it up um, the touch screen itself is very very responsive uh, I'm not sure not sure how well that's coming across there but um, the system itself uh, I've got pretty big hands so it fits pretty well in my hands um, there are some issues with the ergonomics of it. it uh, anybody who's played with like a PlayStation, a P uh, PSP Go knows like you've got to come up with kind of clever ways to hold it for certain games. Um, like Little Deviants, you've, there's a whole bunch of different hand positions that you've got to hold this thing in. Um, it feels good to me. The, the dual sticks are nice. Um, very precise. Uh, it, it feels pretty good in my hands, like in uh, shooter form, if you've got your thumbs on the dual sticks and your, uh, your uh, index finger on the triggers up top. Um, yeah, it would feel like it would handle pretty well for a first person shooter. Um, very surprised by the D-pad. This is the best D-pad, in my opinion, that I've ever seen. It's, uh, it's, it's one single unit, like it, the, the directional buttons don't you don't move independently but I don't know I don't know if you can hear that it's got a click to it um, yeah like I said it moves extremely well if you're doing like quarter circle for uh, Street Fighter um, you know Ryu's Hadoukens would come off real nice on this uh, in terms of fighters this may be the best d-pad for fighters um, ever that I've played. I played some uh, Darkstalkers, uh, the PSP version on here, and it came off really well. The stick itself too should be pretty good. Um, I think it'll be better than the nub, personally, the, uh, or the, uh, the, the thumb pad on the 3DS, which worked pretty well for, uh, for Street Fighter. Um, you know, my preference would be to actually probably use the D-pad for fighters, so really impressed with that. Um, one negative was the uh, the position of the speakers. You can see they're just to the left there of the um, the, th the thumbsticks on both sides. Um, yeah, my thumb constantly covers the speakers when you hold the th the uh, when you're using the sticks here. It covers the speakers and muffles the sound. So, I mean, even if they had moved that speaker down, you know, a couple. A quarter of an inch, a couple millimeters, uh, would have made a big difference. The uh, touch screen on the back, um, other than being a fingerprint magnet, much like the front, is uh, very responsive. You see that little gray pad there, that's kind of grip. It does come in handy. Um, the camera on the back. Uh, real quick on the camera, the camera is nothing special. Um, you know, I don't mind at all. I'm not going to use this to take photos, really. Uh, it serves a purpose for, like, AR games. Um, when it comes to gaming, it serves a purpose. If you want to snap a quick picture, it's, it does fine, but it's, 
it's nothing special. Um, another thing I wish they would have done away with are these uh, these little metal loops here. They used to be kind of, kind of for, for the straps, I believe. You can see it here. I have a PSP 2000, I believe, or is this 3000? You used to run the strap through there from what I remember. Anyways, um, you see on this side how it doesn't have it. That actually, for me, helps me hold the system a lot better, so... I kind of wish those things weren't there. I'd be able to get a better grip on this thing. I don't think they serve much purpose other than, I don't know, maybe protection against uh, dropping. I, I don't know why it's really there other than aesthetics. Um, front facing camera is even lower res than the back facing camera. It's uh, up here, you can see. Um, you can see how responsive the, uh, the touchpad is here. It's kind of strange. Sometimes if I just hover my finger over top without quite touching, and I touched it there, but it'll uh, it'll sense it as a touch, which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, as I said, the screen itself is is beautiful. Uh, the colors on this are phenomenal. Um, I guess that's it that I can really think of. If anybody has any questions for, uh, well, in terms of the system, I'll go into the software here. If anybody has any hardware questions about it, just let me know. Um, the speakers sound okay, nothing too phenomenal. Um, sounds pretty good out of headphones. I just tried them with my iPhone headphones. I was going to uh, set up my Turtle Beach ones and try them uh, with the, the Bluetooth integration there and have the wireless headphones and see how it sounded then. But I haven't got around to doing that yet. I uh, can do a quick size comparison here. Um, I have my 3DS, PSP 2000, and Go. Um, this has been done before. You know, I know this is all, the Japanese version has been picked apart already. Um, I just thought I'd give you guys my impressions and do a quick little uh, video here. Um, so, you know, it's substantially larger than the uh, PSP, but um, to me, this isn't a pocket system anyways. This is something you throw in your bag, knapsack, or whatever. Uh, you're not going to be putting this in your pocket. Um, you can see the screen's bigger there. Uh, yeah, not, not a whole lot bigger to me. It's, lengthwise, it's not much different at all. Um, you can see the difference from the Go here. The Go is much smaller. And then the 3DS quite a bit smaller. Pretty much fits in the screen area of the PSP Go just to give you a sense of size. Um, okay, to the uh, software here, I'll just go over a few things. Um, what should I start with here? I'll start with the PSN store. Uh, the store is up and running on the PSP um, for North America. I was able to download uh, uh, Super Stardust Delta. Um, in terms of the content manager, uh, I mean, I can, it'll, it'll, it'll fire up, but I haven't been able to transfer any content from my PS3. It just keeps giving me an error. The only way I was able to get games on the system was to uh, go to my download history through the PS Store and uh, and re-download them over Wi-Fi, which worked really well, actually. It's pretty quick. Quite a bit quicker than it was on the uh, original PSP. Um, let me see here. Oh, I forgot to mention battery life. Uh, Sony stated that the battery life would be between four to five hours. Um, my, you know, my experience hasn't been too far off from that. I don't think I've quite made five hours in terms of... Uh, straight gaming, um, maybe four and a half, anywhere from uh, three and three quarters to four and a half hours. Um, it's, I've been pretty happy with it. I haven't really had any issues. So, um, yeah, so Content Manager uh, hasn't been working that well. You are able to download PlayStation Store uh, games. Um, there is not all... Uh, PSP games are available for download or or transfer right now. 
Um, one of the notable uh, omissions is uh, Valkyria Chronicles 2. I wasn't able to transfer that, which is kind of disappointing. But um, I'll show you here. I have... Um, so yeah, this is the uh, XMB. At first, I wasn't a big fan, but uh, I'm getting used to it. The circle icons, I'm more of like a straight lines square kind of fan. I'd rather have things in kind of folders and columns, so um, it's taken a little getting used to. But you can customize, much like the iPhone, and drag and drop the icons. You can put a different colored background. You see when I switch here, I have red for my Vita games. Um, you can move them in any configuration. Um, so down to the PSP games, I was able to upload uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, Mega Man, Power Stone, Riviera, Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins, and Darkstalkers. Um, these are the minis games I was able to download. Uh, it's not a whole lot. I have a lot of minis games downloaded. And uh, these are the only ones I was able to get on the device. None of them work. You see when I fire it up here and go to start, um, it'll look like it's going to work. And then an error code will just pop up. Um, haven't been able to play, like I said, not a single mini on here yet, so a little bit disappointing. Sorry, I should have focused that a long time ago. I'm kind of out of focus here. Um, I'm going to show you guys real quick. One thing that was really impressive with was the, uh, the, um, the quality of the PSP games being played on here. Uh, with the better screen, they, the games look far more crisp. Um, some look better than others. I'm firing up Power Stone Collection here. Um, this one really, like I said, I was really impressed with uh, how crisp it looked and the, uh, the colors. Um, PSP games definitely get a bump on this system in terms of uh, graphically. Uh, they look really good. Just get out of that. So you can see there you just hit the PS button and swipe to close a game or an application. I'm sure you guys, most of you have already seen that. Uh, Welcome Park is just a quick tutorial on, um, on the system's, uh, like the touch screen. It, it'll go through little games to teach you how to use the back screen, the front screen, the gyroscope, all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, oh, the, uh, as soon as you uh, connect your system to Wi-Fi, you'll be prompted to download the uh, system update. Um, it just came out in Japan. Apparently, it's ready to go here, too. It adds the, um, the maps. It adds maps, and I believe it was uh, video capability. So it's not only can you just can you take pictures with the back, the rear-facing camera, you can take video now, too. Again, the video is not great quality. Uh, you can sync all your trophies. I don't have a whole lot. I'm not a big, big PlayStation guy. Um, I've probably got more. I've got a lot more achievements than I do trophies. Uh, Near is pretty cool. You can fire it up. I'm not going to go right into it, but um, you can see people that are in your area. I've been able to uh, become friends with, uh, I think, four or five people in within like a 15 kilometer radius. 10 miles or whatever of my house so you know other Canadians that have been able to get the PSP uh, yeah it's I haven't completely mastered near yet uh, I think there's a lot of features that aren't quite working yet probably need more people online to have them work better uh, let me see here what else Um, I guess I can fire up a Vita game for you here. I think I have Uncharted in here. Um, in terms of the performance of the PS uh, Vita, it's basically a uh, PS3 in your, uh, basically a mobile PS3. The graphics on these games are early, com comparable to early... Um, PS3 games. Um, obviously, as we 
get further and further from launch and developers have more time with the system, the graphics are probably going to catch up to the PS3. I know it's not as powerful, but it's pretty impressive what they've been able to do uh, graphic-wise. I'm sure you guys have seen, I'm not going to go through into this, there's plenty of gameplay videos of Uncharted, but that's how you fire up the game if you, if it matters to you. To get out of the game, PS, press the, press the uh, PlayStation button, swipe to close. Um, okay, I guess, real quick impressions on the games themselves, Uncharted is Uncharted. Uh, it's just like the, the, uh, the PS3 versions. It's not made by Naughty Dog. It's made by a different company here, let me think. Ben Studio. So it's it's a different um, different team that created the game. But uh, it's definitely Uncharted. It feels like Uncharted. I'm a little burnt out on Uncharted. I just finished uh, uh, the last one, Drake's Deception, I believe. Um, so, I mean, I, I grabbed the game. I, I'll play it eventually. I probably should have waited. I was going to wait and see if I can pick it up a little cheaper. But um, in terms of the game itself, they kind of force you to use a lot of the features on the, on the Vita here um, with this, the touch screen, the, back, uh, the rear touch screen, gyroscope. Um, it can get a little annoying. Some things it's great for. Some things I'd, I'd rather not use it for. Um, when you're jumping from ledge to ledge, instead of uh, pressing the X button constantly and pointing to whatever ledge it is, you can actually take with your finger and trace your route along the ledge, which is really nice because there is a lot of ledges in this game. And it, it's really a time saver. You can trace your route and you just kind of sit back and watch him auto do it. Um, that I found really handy. Uh, the gyroscope works well. Another key thing for this is aiming. So you push the left trigger to aim um, and then you move with the right trigger to, to to move your cursor around and then you can do fine aiming with the gyroscope in the PSP so you can move it around and you know get that just that fine tuning that you need that really comes in handy in this game it works very well um, yeah the touch screen there's certain things like you'll find an artifact and you take your finger to dust it off and stuff like that that's not too bad there are a few like cutting down bamboo and stuff that forces you to make swiping motions which is kind of annoying I'd rather just be able to push a button for that so like I said some things are you know useful when it comes to um, the PS Vita's features and some things I'd rather just be able to do the traditional way um, next up here uh, Little Deviance this don't be confused this is not a kids game don't be confused by the cute little characters and the cartoon look. Um, it can be pretty tough. This, uh, in my opinion, is a must-buy with every system. I was able to get it, I think, pre-ordered for 25 bucks. So to me, that's a steal. It, it'll quickly show you all the features that uh, the PS Vita is capable of. Um, one of the best is the, uh, the AR. You know, you can kind of just use the camera to, to point and it looks like you know the guys are flying around your room and you gotta shoot them down that one was really really good I was really impressed with that um, uses, I'm sure if anybody who's checked out Little Vita or Little Deviants you'll see the level with the back touch that can be surprisingly hard learning how to use the back touch is kind of something that you're gonna have to get used to uh, me especially I really struggled with it it's kind of a new concept so um, like I said must buy this is the kind of game that you hand to your wife and say, you know, check this out. This, uh, what, $300 piece of hardware wasn't a waste of money kind of thing. Uh, my wife loved playing Little Deviants. Uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend Little Deviants, especially, I think the max it sells for is 30 bucks, so that's not too bad. Um, Hot Shots Golf is Hot Shots Golf. There's not a whole lot to say about it. Um, it's probably the best Hot Shots Golf in the series. Um, I've played pretty much all of them, right back to the PS1. Um, the graphics are great. The character models are beautiful. Um, 
the environments themselves could be better. Uh, it's a solid game of golf, though. It's basically like a Tiger Woods golf game mixed with like a quirky Japanese collection mechanic. You know, you you uh, you know you gain XP for your golfer. You can buy new golfers, new outfits. Um, yeah, basically collecting, like I said. The uh, last game here, I'll save this one for last on purpose. Actually, it's not going to be the last game. Um, it's Wipeout 2048. This game blew me away. This is the must-have game, at least of the four that I have here. The graphics are beautiful. Easily my favorite Wipeout game. Um, it seems to control a lot better than previous ones. I think they toned down the difficulty a bit. Um, there's a whole bunch of different control configurations. You can use a gyroscope if you want. Uh, the graphics are ridiculous in this. Um, the sense of speed is phenomenal. It feels like it's running at 60 frames per second. I could be wrong, but um, I couldn't be more impressed with this game. I haven't been able to try the online features yet. I use my pass, but there's just nobody to play against right now. Um, yeah, this is a must buy. Again, I was able to pre-order this for 25 bucks, so that's a complete steal. I, I couldn't recommend this game more. I've played this by far the most out of any of the games that I have. Um, the final game here is uh, Super Stardust Delta. Uh, it's Super Stardust. It's got some new mechanics with the touch screen, uh, the rear screen, stuff like that. Um, graphics are phenomenal. Um, it has, I think I heard that it has cross-platform. By the way, Wipeout has cross-platform too. I'm not sure how they're going to go about doing that, but um, yeah, it's uh, Super Stardust. It's a great game. Ten dollars in the PSN store. Um, if you're a fan, definitely pick it up. Okay, guys. So here's the big question: Should you buy the PS Vita, and is it worth? The uh, $250 price tag. Um, to me it is. I don't regret this purchase at all. Uh, of course, it's all relative to your uh, personal amount of disposable income and uh, how badly you want the system. I, I think for the amount of tech that's in this device, it uh, definitely warrants that uh, $250 price tag. Uh, the, the killer thing is the price of the memory cards, of course. Sony loves to uh, kind of gouge people with their proprietary memory. Um, you know, that can take a uh, you know, $250 device right out to a $300 device, you know, plus tax real quickly. So um, when the price was announced, people were actually very happy at $250. Uh, at the time, the 3DS was the same price. And if you just put them side by side, the Vita was a far better deal. Um, as soon as the 3DS price was dropped, that uh, people's perspective changed real quick. And um, for a lot of people, the Vita became a, you know, overpriced device. Uh, everybody knows it's not doing well in Japan. It is getting better. Um, uh, a price drop will be coming obviously. I don't think it's going to be coming until the holiday season. Sony can be, as, as uh, most of you know, Sony can be pretty stubborn with stuff like that. So um, you will find bundles right off the bat. There already are, you know, um, here in Canada they had the first edition bundle with a three, uh, free copy of Uncharted. So uh, you will see deals like that, pack-in games, stuff like that. But in terms of a price drop from the 249, uh, I don't think that's coming until the holiday season. So, um, yeah, like I like I said, I don't regret buying the device. Um, Two forty nine, I think it's worth. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed my review or impressions of the uh, the uh, PS Vita Wi Fi edition, uh, North American edition. Um, yeah, please subscribe, comment. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, post them below. Uh, I have no problems answering anything or just talking about the video in general. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Later.